Hi guys, I'm Dan at VintageVelo.org. Today, got to be a little bit quiet because I'm out here on a GCN shoot uh, with Andrew Feather and Cy, and we are taking out, or more they are, uh, taking out a really cool bike I've only recently got hold of, one of Alberto Contador's 2016 Tinko Sax Off Tour de France Specialized Tarmacs. It's an incredible bike, so good. Cy and Andrew have been spanking it up one of the local hills here, uh, out in the Cotswolds and they've just taken a KOM on it that uh, was a bit of a challenge but shh, I'll take you onto the bike in a moment. Right, mate. Mate, look oh, easy. Right. Any luck? Find it. I did. Got it. Just quite close. Two seconds. You got it? Yeah. Hey! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good um, man. Yeah, yeah. Two seconds. So well, well done. One, one, four, yeah. Now here we have it. This is Alberto Contador's 2016 Specialized Tarmac. Uh, straight as he rode it uh, uh, from the 2016 Tour de France, which admittedly, yes, that year he did crash out on this very bike. Um, on that subject, uh, yeah, we did have it stripped down, went off to Carbon Works for a full x-ray and a bit of paintwork um, because, you know, any uh, carbon fiber bike that's been crashed, you've got to get that professionally checked just for peace of mind if nothing else but what we have on here there's a lot of fantastic custom contador only kind of stuff going on um, he was one of only two pros that year to be still using um, mechanical shifting uh, yeah no di2 for contador uh, he liked dura ace mechanical which is what we have on here um, and uh, we have up front what have we got 53 so uh, as we would expect, and to a healthy 28 on the back, which back then, you know, that was a, a pretty hardcore climbing set. Uh, we also have the enormous ceramic speed uh, rear jockey wheel set up. Um, he wasn't sponsored by them. He wasn't even supposed to be using them. He just had them put on, obviously, because he preferred them. Uh, obviously, also, we've got the cool uh, funky cable wire sets here as well, and a few other bits and bobs. Um, something so I noticed, uh, we have somehow got uh, screw-in bottom bracket shells in a press fit hub. Um, not sure how that works, but it works. It's all very good. Weight-wise, this weighs in at 6.7 kilos, all in without the bottles so that's with pedals with cages i have swapped the pedals out for this test ride um but uh, yeah with everything on there 6.7 kilo so would just nudge over into that 6.8 legal territory when you put a power meter on here but other than that it is really quite something uh, we've still got a bit of the uh the tour for france tech on here as well a uh, little red thing down there uh, that would be a genuine Tour de France transponder, so they can keep track of where everyone is. It's still on this bike, um, which is kind of cool. Um, also, we still have uh, the 23 mil um, blacked out. Uh, those are Continental Pro Limited tyres. These were the tubular tyres only available to the Pro Peloton. Um, these are just starting to go a little bit hard, but they are still rideable, so we're certainly leaving them on there uh, for the time being. But enough about the bike. Let's just get out there and ride. Okay, uh, so I'm out on this beast of a Contador bike. Um, I'm on the beautiful hills uh, around the Cotswolds area. Um, slightly busy on the traffic, but the roads are superb and the hills are everywhere. Um, and this is just the right bike for that. Um, now, obviously, you know, contemporary wise, um, oh, a little bit of a downhill, now we're going to go uphill. Um, contemporary wise, yeah, you, you've got to look directly at the dogma, mostly because uh, in period, you know, you've got Froomey uh, out there on the F8, uh, and then you've got Contador going head to head with him uh, on the S Works. Personally, because I am a bigger guy, more of a flat road bruiser, I do prefer the dogma. Uh, just for its general overall ability but when it comes to going up you know you get on a bit of a hill like this and as soon as you leap out of the saddle it just transforms now group set wise obviously this bike you know the bike itself is a featherweight it's a little bit harsh for me on the uh, the ride um, interestingly i would say 
that Cavendish McLaren Venge we rode a few months ago, uh, that was his 2012 bike, I would say was a little bit more refined. Um, McLaren, I think, um, did a better job on their carbon layup um, to make a almost a stiff bike that was actually felt, you know, a lot more refined and a lot more comfortable. This is definitely a little bit on the crashy side. Interestingly enough, the SL4, the model that predated this one, um, Contador actually complained to Specialize that they were making it too harsh, even for the pros, too stiff. Um, so they softened these up for the SL5, uh, which is what this is. Even though it's a bit of a funky custom one made just for him, it is super stiff, super light. Um, but yeah, for me, Dogma just feels like it rides a little better. And that McLaren Venge of Mark Cavendish, uh, yeah, better than both, I would say. Um, also, this is not DI2, obviously this is manual Dura-Ace. Uh, it is very, very nice, without a doubt. Would I go for DI2? Yeah, because I'm a bit lazy when it comes to gear changes. I would probably plumb for the DI2 over this, but I know a couple of my buddies who've ridden this, who are gobsmacked by it. They love it, and they wouldn't change it for anything. Now, a fascinating thing uh, about Alberto Contador's bikes um, is that there are very, very few of them uh, in the public domain. And that's because Alberto Contador has the most amazing, uh, I'm going to call it a self-museum of his bikes, pictures, jerseys and trophies, uh, basically in a bunker underneath his house. Um, and there's like 40 or 50 odd of his bikes all on display perfectly down there uh, in his own personal museum. Um, very much like Miguel Indegrain, Indegrain who also uh, famously kept most of his bikes as well. Um, so I was really pleased to get a chance to get hold of this one, which funnily enough, a few years back when Tinkoff Saxo uh, went down in late 2016, I got offered um, a couple of team bikes in 2017. Um, and. Uh, this was one I kind of thought, I ummed and ahed a little bit and then said, oh, I tell you what, really fancy that Contador bike. By then, of course, it had already gone and I had to wait another seven years uh, for this one to come up and I had to put my hand in my pocket for a lot more than I could have got it back then. Yeah, right. You've done this before. Do you want to talk to you or the camera? You can either, well, it doesn't make any difference. All right. And if you could mention Barry at the end. Who? Barry, that's my mother-in-law. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> no, trust me, she's in her 80s. She loves this guy, like, it's huge. Yeah, totally. Right. <laughs> right, stop laughing. Okay, so no cafe stop today, but I have just grabbed Cy uh, in between shots. Uh, he's been out uh, on the Specialized. Um, now, for me, I really like that bike. It definitely climbs great when I'm out of the saddle. This may have more to do with the fact that, as ever, it is too small for me, uh, and I haven't been able to get the right length seat post. But, sorry, what was your thinking on the bike? Well, I mean, it's a treat to ride, isn't it? Like, an actual Alberto Contador bike. What a privilege. In terms of how it rides, I mean, it's super light, isn't it? Yeah, um, yeah. And it's unbelievably stiff. So I, I have a feeling that this is a pro only, like extra stiff version. Like it's bonkers how stiff that bomb bracket is and the head tube as well. So you notice that big time. But then the other thing is just going back to like beautifully set up rim brakes and mechanical shifting. Like it's, um, you're reminded of just how lovely that stuff is yeah. to ride, you know? Yeah. Like it's, um, yeah, it's brilliant. But no, it's, it's cool. But it's mainly the weight, I think, that's the difference. Yeah. Right? Um, Six, so, Six yeah. point seven kilos all in. Um, you know, that's, uh, you know, it would obviously go out slightly over the, the legal limit as soon as you put uh, um, some tech on there. But that is really pretty light. Um, personally, as I maybe discussed previously, um, I would probably at a push go with an F8 or an F10 Dogma over this one. Um, I don't know why it just works better for me. Um, but, Cy, what were you thinking? Oh, crikey. What would you prefer, a, a Pinarello or a Specialized S-Works? No, I don't know. Third world problem, yeah. Yeah, no, I think, um, 
I mean, I would go for the Pinarello, but like, yeah, what can you say? Like, there, there, there isn't much in it. it no, both are fantastic. Well, both won Grand Tours and plenty of them, didn't they, back in that era? So uh, exactly. So, yeah, but no, I think I go for the Pinarello. That little bit of extra aerodynamics and the little bit of Pinarello. You know, yeah. that'd be the bike I'd want to be seen with outside the camp. I guess. Are you a Froomey guy? Are you a Contador guy? But hard to choose between those two. To be fair, neither actually, if we're being totally honest. <laughs> but anyway, that's probably another video. Dan. <laughs> Excellent. Anyway, right. Um, thanks a lot for that. Uh, thanks, Sai. Well, thank you for lending us the bike. What, what an absolute treat. Yeah, and uh, yeah, appreciate that one. Um, do like and subscribe for anything else that's cool to do with vintage bikes. Thanks a lot.